Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, another new Guitar Day video. Don't forget to check out my new Guitar Day video on the Taylor GS Mini Alcoa left-handed version. Uh, picked it up yesterday as well as this beauty, Martin GPC 11E. What a nice guitar. You notice the body shape looks a lot like a Taylor? Interesting, isn't it? Anyways, so let's go over the specs off the website first and uh, we'll uh, talk more about this thing. So as for price in Canada, I got this at my local Long McQuaid store uh, in North Bay for $1,489, so $1,489. Pretty good deal. By the way, not only is it drum month this month at Long McQuaid, also Martin month. Don't forget to check that out too. See what their financing is all about. All right, so we have a gloss spruce top and sapelli back and sides. Now, this is also a made in Mexico Martin. Still a real Martin. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. It's, you know, it's still a real Martin. Anyhow, um, all solid wood. So solid wood top, solid wood back and sides. None of this laminated or layered stuff. Um, and I think about it, you know, it's like 1500 bucks. Like to get an all solid wood tailor is going to cost you at least twice that or more in Canada. And it's like, and Martin's doing it and still made in a Mexican factory. Now, Taylor has a Mexican factory too. And even at $2,500 for the 224 Deluxe Koa um, CE that I wanted, because that's kind of like my dream tailor, which, well, I guess it's not anymore. Um, this is much better. Um, anyway, um, that's still a guitar that has a solid wood top, but still has layered back and sides at $2,500. So kind of like if you're an all wood kind of person, you might want to even consider looking in toward the Martin guitars. Now, I've had a few Martins in my life, okay? I mean, my first one was a 1970s uh, era uh, 12 string, which, yeah, that was like worth well over 10 grand. That was a nice guitar. Kind of miss it. Um, and I've had a few other Martins since. Not quite near as expensive, but pretty good guitars, though. Um, the one I do miss, though, uh, it was a cutaway. It's on my channel. Just look up Martin Guitars, you'll find. Anyway, so as far as the uh, the whole thing goes here, body size is a grand performance. Uh, they call it a 14, foot, 14 fret cutaway. Scale length is 27 and a quarter inches, or 0.4, sorry, 25.4 inch, my bad. Um, brace uh, is scalloped bracing. Fingerboard width at the nut is one and three quarter inch. Um, Performing artist is what they call the neck shape. It's very nice and thin profiled. I really love it. You can just wrap your hands around this no problem. Um, anyways, um, high performance taper on the neck as well. Uh, finish, of course, is gloss on the top, uh, but not on the back and sides. It's not gloss and the neck is not gloss. It just feels like raw wood. If anything, it's probably got just a very thin thin coating of uh, varnish uh, on the body uh, and the neck it's just it's not sticky it's it's beautiful um, and uh, anyways so what else we got here uh, the, the fretboard or fingerboard uh, is FSC uh, certified rich light now rich light is not a wood look up rich light and how it's made and you'll find out what exactly it is Number of frets is 20. The inlay is mother of pearl. So we do have our inlay in here. Um, we also have, I believe, the same thing as for our fret markers too. Um, and it's kind of interesting that they have two markers on the seventh fret. It's like, you don't really see that. That's usually it's on the 12th and it is on the 12th here too. So that's kind of interesting. Now the nut material is bone. I suspect the saddle was probably the same. They look the same color. They look like the same material. Uh, the pins, as far as I know, are plastic. It doesn't say. Um, I am thinking eventually I might upgrade the pins to something uh, more to either bone pins or um, might even go with tusk. I don't know. Uh, I do have a set of tusk pins here, but wrong color. 
Um, the electronics are Fishman MXT. Now this thing also has a built-in tuner, which is actually just down inside on the bottom of the sound hole. Very easily accessible with your thumb or whatever finger you happen to get in there um, and turn the tuner on and off. And it does support currently multiple tuning modes, which I've not gone through that yet. Um, the main electronics, as far as controls go, you won't see a preamp anywhere here. Um, it's actually inside and you have on the right uh, toward the headstock, you do have the gain or volume control and on the left you have just a simple tone control, which works great. Um, I just set the tone around the middle position, gave me a really awesome sound and the gain is set, I believe uh, around 12 to maybe 130-ish kind of thing. Rough guess worked out either way for the mixing board at the church and uh, my wife was able to get the board set up with my guitar very easily. I actually played this at practice last night and I'll be playing it again this Sunday. Normally the team I'm with right now for the next two weeks I would play electric but yeah you know I uh, got to the church just in time for practice and I kind of left the electric at home and figured let's try the Martin and take her for a spin and uh, yeah anyways. This thing also comes with a really, really nice gig bag. So what I'm gonna do now um, is I'm going to uh, close out the website here because we don't need it anymore. Now, from what I understand from Long Clay, Martin never used to give very nice gig bags, but this is really nice. This is a really good quality gig bag. It has the straps on the back for strap on your back or one-handed carry handle. You also have a really nice padded carry handle here as well. Uh, big pocket for putting your music in there, your whatever, whatever you need. Okay. Also has this uh, little hanger dewey too, I guess. I don't know what for, but whatever. Now, Taylor could take a lesson from Martin on this one. So on a $1,500 guitar, you get one really nice case. Very, very nice. Very nicely padded, too. It's just really super cool case. I like it. Anyways, so Martin's really have been stepping up their game. Now, for a Mexican guitar made in Mexico, um, for under $1,500 and getting all solid wood on top of that, how do you go wrong? And Martin on top of that, right? Taylor's got a Martin factory, too, but... You're not going to see solid wood guitars come out of there for 1500 bucks. So, and I've owned a lot of Taylors. So, uh, just as a bit of a viewpoint, there's the, the back side of her. And then the side view there. And there. The neck. And of course, the, 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 the top is really nice. And even though I'm not really fussy when it comes to gloss tops, um, this is really nice in the... the, the Spruce really shimmers nice. Tortoise shell uh, type pick guard on there. Uh, just really nice. The bridge is also rich light too, apparently. Uh, so fretboard and bridge kind of match in that area. But uh, the tuners are kind of like a smaller kind of tuner, at least on the key, key side anyways. Um, and they are sealed tuners too, uh, which is fine. Now, let's get to the strings that come with this thing, because I actually have the, the tag here. Um, <coughs> proudly strung with Martin, acoustic, authentic acoustic lifespan 2.0 treated phosphorus bronze. Now, I'm a real phosphorus bronze nut when it comes to Taylor guitars, and I've also thrown uh, Elixir Nano Web phosphorus bronze, because um, that's what comes with Taylors. I've also thrown a set on my Fender CC60, and primo um and i also i don't remember if i switched the strings on my yamaha acoustic or not yet i think they're the original still on there and i have opti webs on my les paul and fantastic anyways eventually i'll end up putting elixirs on this um but these are nice so i want to give you guys a bit of a playthrough i'm not amping it up today but you know we'll we'll get to a video like that before i do forget this is our back side here where our battery is kept also, uh, our strap pin and, of course, our input jack for cable or wireless system. And they create a nice amount of distance, too. Again, Taylor could take some lessons from Martin on this one. And it kind of...
kind of the shape of the body is a lot like a tailor too, which is kind of interesting. The sound is very nice out of this. So let's get to doing some playing here. got some good throat to it. I'm trying to do something. I worked this out this morning. get it figured out it, it's i'm messing around more and more with the the blue stuff that my own teacher taught me years ago which is just the basics of you know and you know and then you have the and the anyways there are three main patterns and i teach my students the same thing um but i started to mess around and i'm like this sounds kind of neat like pretty decently I, I was actually better at it this morning anyways um, doing bar chords you know actually pretty decent I'm suspecting these are also a 1254 gauge I do have to check Martin's website but that is a very common gauge on Martin guitars so um, I am gonna bring it down to 1253 so as far as uh, factory neck relief, we've got about ten thousandths there, so that'll actually pull back a little tiny bit um, once we put on uh, just a slightly lighter set of strings. Uh, but I'm not changing these until they die. I mean, these things, even though they're a little noisier than elixirs, um, they're coated lifespan strings, and it's like they're not cheap either. So I'm gonna get my money's worth out of these strings. <laughs> sound is really really nice I you know I don't even remember what I paid for my last Martin that I bought uh, that was a couple years ago but this is worth every bit of the 1500 bucks like seriously I mean and that's Canadian dollars right no no dead spots no buzzing I the the thing has got beautiful fret work I mean it's it's a Martin you know like I was like wow blown away and this was one that actually uh, I met the Martin rep in Bracebridge at um, the Long McQuaid grand opening um, thing that they had going on last weekend and uh, of course I also met you know the guy that runs or owns Gibson um, that was fun I was chatting it up with him too met the uh, president of Long McQuaid um, I already knew his brother, but I didn't know this guy, um, and now I do. Uh, met a few other people too while I was there, and I was like, but the Martin guy anyways, the Martin rep that was there, he had suggested this guitar uh, to take a look at, and he said, you know, just get on the brain in for you, check it out, and see if you like it. It's a really fantastic guitar, you know, and I was expecting, you know, to pay like, you know, more than 1500 bucks because we weren't talking price tags at that point he just mentioned this model and you know and uh, he did say that every every single guitar from martin 
can be done left or right handed, no extra charge. So that's also really nice, especially considering my primary side is left handed. So as far as finger picking goes, beautiful sounding playing guitar um, the action height is actually pretty good um, it's probably I, I would like it a little lower maybe but I don't have any problem doing bar chords so I think I'll leave it um, but uh, yeah and it will actually kind of go back a little bit um, when I do put some lighter strings on because it's different tension right so it will actually drop a little hair um, but yeah fantastic guitar man like you got to check out some martin guitars that's for sure um and being that this is drum month and martin month at long mcquay get down to your local one uh check out see what they got for martin's in stock and well whatever else if you know taylor's fenders yamaha's ibanez whatever right um, but this is actually Martin month as well, which is kind of cool. So um, anyways, um, I think in the overall spectrum of things as far as, you know, what are the downsides to this? Well, I don't really see any actual downsizes. The only thing that really annoyed me about this um, was the tuner um, in the sound hole thing. I'm like, seriously? But it does cut off your audio too to the sound system when you do activate it. So if you have to retune on stage, um, especially if you're on a big stage with tons of people, they're not going to hear you retuning your guitar um, when you uh, use this tuner. And it is a very accurate tuner. It does support multiple modes apparently. Um, how that happens, we're not sure. Um, Got to do more homework on that. But that is the one thing I didn't like is like, Really, they put a bill. I, I mean, I don't mind, you know, the preamp being inside the sound hole, but I thought, why a tuner? I mean, he didn't mention that to me, uh, the Martin rep, but I found that out by watching YouTube videos. I'm like, seriously, they got a tuner in there? I wonder how good that can really be. And then they said, okay, it cuts off the audio too, which I did try all this stuff out at the store. But it does cut off the tuning, um, it does cut off the, uh, the signal when you hit the tuner and it's like well i guess it's kind of neat i guess i could grow to to enjoy it uh the one thing i do enjoy is now if i'm going to play this you know on stage i don't have to have a snark tuner on here at all you know um because and i do like the snark tuners but this one is extremely accurate so i don't have any issues there it works great um I think about the only thing I would personally change, really, the most, would be maybe putting some gold tuners on this thing. I threw gold, gold tuners on my last Martin, and it looked really sharp. So I might actually upgrade the tuners, because um, they're, they're going to be an easy, easy find, and I want higher turning ratio, too. But that's a personal preference. That has nothing to do with, you know, what I think in the end for the star rating thing. I do like the separation distance here, too. That was a really good idea. Um, and I can use any strap I want, which is also a bonus. Um, so I would say, you know, in the overall spectrum of things, I would have to say, you know, um, I'd say about four and a half out of five is probably about where I'm at. Like, nothing's perfect. I'm not dinging the tuner, even though it is there. It, it's kind of different to get used to. Um, but uh, anyways, um, no finish blends anywhere on this thing at all. It is just so well done. Like, 
that that was really good so I'm quite happy with this thing um, but uh, so nothing is perfect um, that's definitely something that you know we uh, have to agree on there nothing is perfect uh, so yeah um, it would be nice if they went back to, to using wood on the fretboard but it has nothing to do with your tone anyway so and the rich light looks good enough I've never had I never had a problem before with my other Martins with rich light so I think we're all right there um, yeah so uh, I don't really know what to say other than uh, it's a fantastic little instrument I, I really like it it's uh, it's really nice and it does break through the mix really well um, when we were playing last night at uh, during our practice um, our lead guitarist has a Takamini that can be very obnoxious uh, and I know I should know I used to have a GD 30 at one time and yeah they're obnoxious and between the two of us there I, I still could have no problem hearing myself uh, either so you know they, it does break through the mix really well uh, and that's, you know, even considering, you know, with the sound system or not, doesn't matter. I could still hear this thing because where I sit, I can't hear anything out of the main speakers, you know. And uh, plus I'm running a cajon at the same time trying to concentrate on doing that. And it's like, I can still hear this really well and I can hear him pretty good too. So they blend very nice. They complement each other very well too. So, but yeah, that's uh, where we're at on this one. Um... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, do check out this model if you haven't already. It is left or right-handed, same price, um, you know. And like I said, Canadian price, you're just shy of fifteen hundred bucks pre-tax. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's worth every penny. And uh, you know, I've had um, a D, uh, what was it, a DRS one, I think it was. Um, that was an all solid wood too, and that was only a grand. Like that was a great deal for that guitar. But it was actually a little on the uh, bohemian -y side uh, in the end for me. But uh, otherwise, not a bad guitar overall. Um, and still being all solid wood. So, but uh, I think I'll be collecting a couple more Martins in the future, that's for sure. Um, anyway, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll definitely be sure to catch you on the next one. Okay, so see ya.